Hey guys, what's going on? Mash GFX here, and today I'm going to be going over another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the Photoshop CS5 Camera Raw feature. So let's go ahead and get started on this. First thing we want to do is head over to our mini bridge option, and then we're going to go through our folders and then select out the image that we wish to edit. For me, I'm just going to be selecting this nice little grass picture here. So in order to head over to Camera Raw, all you have to do is right click, and head over to open in camera raw. Now from here I'm going to take you guys on an in-depth tour of basically all the features here and what everything does. So let's go ahead and start out with the basics. First off we have our temperatures and our tints. Now temperatures obviously you can lower it and make it a cooler image or raise it up to make it more of a warmer image. And then your tints are basically just your tints if you want to tint it purple or green and we've moved on to exposure. Now exposure is something that kind of exposes how much light is um, allowed within the picture. So for example if we were to decrease this obviously the picture gets a lot more darker and if we increase it it brightens up. And then our recovery is actually a really nice option. Now I'll show you what recovery can do after we go through some other features and come back to this. But recovery allows you to do is basically once you've edited the image you can go back to this and sort of recover some of the lost details that you might have uh, had. And then your fill light is just basically how much light is within the picture. So obviously we can increase this and then decrease this. Our blacks is the same thing. It's just how much black is allowed within the picture. Now I don't really mess around too much when I'm doing my own images. I don't mess around too much with the fill light, the blacks, and the brightnesses. Um, generally I stay away from those. but brightness is, is pretty self-explanatory how bright the image is now contrast is a very cool feature that I like to mess with as you can see if we increase it it kind of sharpens up the image but also brings in a lot of those vibrant colors so if we increase this it kind of just helps it stand out but you gotta be careful not to overdo it and obviously if we decrease this it makes the image a lot more plain and then clarity is a really another another cool feature so if we increase our clarity here as you can see if we zoom in here you can get a pretty good idea of how much just sharper this image is you can see all the little pines here coming off of the uh, the cow tail so we can go ahead and set this back at zero and then our vibrance and our saturations are basically your um, advanced color toning so if we increase this uh, your colors will become a lot more vibrant and a lot more exposed along with our saturation now the next thing we're going to and move on to is our tone curves. Now what we're going to do, I'm not going to mess around with the points too much because generally they gave you a really nice option set here to kind of just have it work a lot more easier without you having to do a lot of manual work. So start off with our highlights. Highlights is basically um, how much of the lightened image is exposed. So if we increase this, as you can see the image becomes a lot more lightened up in those areas where the sun is reflecting off of it. Now our lights is another cool option, so if we increase this it gets a lot more brighter. It's kind of like our fill light option. See if we decrease this then our uh, our exposure of the light kind of goes away. And then our darks and our shadows are pretty much the same thing. Obviously you can decrease this to make the image a lot more of a darker tone or increase to get the opposite effect. Along with our shadows, so we can get rid of our shadows in a sense and make it a lot more brightened up. Or we can increase our shadows. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is our details. Now the details tablet is a very um, you know, specifically good thing that Photoshop CS5 has included in this. Now I'll go ahead and start out with the sharpening effect. Now this is a really neat effect because what you can do is basically just sharpen up your images and make them so crisp. It's, it's amazing. So we head over to our amount and we can increase this. And as you can see the image just becomes a lot more detailed so we can look at all these little every little precision detail that's going on in this image along with our radius which is basically how much the image is getting detailed along with our detail tablet and our masking so we can go ahead and set all these back at zero now the next thing I want to talk about is the noise reduction feature now this is a feature that is all new but is probably the most handy feature that you will have in all of camera Raw. Now let's just say you had an image that was kind of blurry in some spots or it just had a lot of noise going around it. This noise reduction feature basically gets rid of all the noise in the image quick and easy. So if we increase this, 
as you can see, the image just becomes a lot more clear, a lot more crisper, a lot more natural. And then we have our luminance detail. And we can increase this and decrease this and play around with it as much as you want. If we decrease this, it kind of gets rid of the detail of the image. But if we increase, we get the opposite effect. And then we have our contrast and colors. So pretty much those are just the same effects as before, but a lot more uh, in tuned. Now the next thing I'm going to quickly cover is the grayscale and HSL options. Now this is pretty much a very um, manual way to mess around with your colors. So obviously you have your hues where you can mess with all of your different color shadings here and then your saturations and your luminance and you can pretty much take an advanced um, action towards how much of the colors are allowed in or allowed out within the image. Now next we have here is split toning and then shadows. Now I don't really mess around with the split toning too much. I haven't really found much of an effect for it because I generally don't like to go this much into detail with changing colors on an image. So for example, if we were to set it to green and we set our saturation up higher, you can see the image comes greener. So that's pretty much what that does. It allows you to have a lot more of a manual control over the colors of this image. Now the next thing we want to talk about is balance. Balance is pretty much, you know, how how much of the image is balanced out with these uh, the highlights and the shadows that we use. So, and then we have our shadows here. What you um, it's the opposite of highlights. So if we set our shadows to like a blue and then we set these up, then your shadows on the blues would be a lot more in depth, and it obviously gives it a lot more of a cooling feature. From here, we're gonna head over to our lens correction. Now, this is something you want to mess with only if you're um dealing with certain types of lenses on certain types of cameras if you want to get a certain shot obviously um, in this shot here you can see we have the blur in the background with a lot of the focus here on this so this is pretty much where you can come in with this I don't really mess around with this feature too much um, what I do mess around with sometimes is the lens Vincent Rich Vincent I'm sorry I can't pronounce that very well but what you do with this is um, normally I'll stick around to the black area and I'll go ahead and just set this here and then if we add our midpoint up a little higher as you can see it will darken the edges of the image so if we increase this it will kind of just feather away some of those edges um, I find that this gives the image a really nice effect um, just kind of adds sort of a border to the image um, so that's what a really neat effect I like to do and the next one to talk about is our effects tablet now we have our green which is pretty pretty self-explanatory we increase this and it adds green to the image um, now you could use this in a sense that if you want to give um, an image more of a, a vintage style, you want to make it look a little bit more old school, um, this is pretty much where that would come into play. And then we have our post crop vintaging, and this is pretty much the same thing as it was before, we but it's a lot more advanced, so we can decrease this and obviously it will uh, focus around the middle area. But if we set our midpoint to a higher standard, then it will basically just feather away some of these edges like so and then we can set our roundness and our feathering up and then we can mess with our highlights from here uh, however much you want to highlight the image now the last thing we're going to talk about is our camera calibration now this is something that you're wanting going to want to use let's just say if you're a professional photographer and you do this for a living um, what you can do is actually go in and save certain settings to your camera um, to calibrate to that specific camera that will automatically adjust certain settings when you open up certain images. So it's a really neat, uh, neat way to kind of just sorten up the process of having to go through and redo every image. And then basically from here, we have our presets, which will go along with your camera and your snapshots. So, um, But that pretty much covers up everything I wanted to talk about today. I went over all the tabs. Um, so uh, anyways guys, uh, please remember to rate this video, thumbs up, thumbs down. I hope it helped you guys uh, kind of get a better in-depth look at the camera raw feature. Uh, but other than that guys, take it easy.